Hello again. Um, and this, uh, this is the second video. I'm going to be reading another article that a beloved brother of mine sent to me from Australia about, uh, about the sad events that are going on in Australia. Um, again, brethren, uh, sisters, Church of the Living God, no matter your nation, um, pray for your brethren, Church of the Living God, and your sisters in Australia. It's pretty bad over there. But um, words do have meaning, don't you know? We're going to look up in this video before we get to the article, uh, which again, I'm going to be using my fancy schmancy cell phone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Still struggle with that. But anyway, anyway, I don't want to get all emotional, but um, I'm going to be looking up a word out of the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Okay? The word we are going to be looking up, now if you have one, please look this up yourself. But if not, uh, you can, on your fancy schmancy cell phone, uh, you can get the uh, 1828 dictionary uh, online. But, you know, if you can get one, this is, this is the compact edition. That's why it's not green. It's the same one as the green one, but it's more compact. But anyway... The word we are going to be looking up is rhetoric. Rhetoric. And um, if you have done any study into the art of rhetoric, as I have, um, you'll find that rhetoric could be very dangerous. Very dangerous. And incidentally, I got turned on to studying rhetoric uh, from a Jesuit. <laughs> uh, yeah, a Jesuit who himself is wonderful, actually, in all honesty, is actually wonderful at the art of rhetoric, just like several others here on YouTube are, um, which makes them dangerous which makes them very dangerous. Because very quickly, brethren, um, we, are, uh, we are told to use great plainness of speech. Let's, uh, we're going to look at this uh, verse of scripture more in context a little later. But very quickly, turn in your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse, verse 5. For neither at any time used we flattering words, as ye know, nor a cloak of covetousness, God is witness. Okay? We are called to use great plainness of speech. Okay? We are called to use great plainness of speech, not to entice with man's words or man's wisdom, philosophy. Okay? But, but rhetoric. What is rhetoric? As defined in Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Rhetoric, noun, the art of speaking with propri propriety, elegance, and force. Two, <coughs> the power of persuasion or attraction, that which allures or charms. We speak of the rhetoric of the tongue and the rhetoric of the heart or eyes. Sweet, silent rhetoric of persuading eyes. Rhetorical, adjective, 
pertaining to rhetoric as the rhetorical art. And it is an art. It really is. Two, containing the rules of rhetoric as a rhetorical treatise. Orator uh, oratorial as a, as a rhetorical flourish. Rhetorically, adverb in the manner of rhetoric, according to the rules of rhetoric, as to treat a subject rhetorically, a discourse rhetoric rhetorically delivered. Rhetor rhetoricate, rhetoricate, verb, intransitive, to play the orator. Rhetorication, rhetorication, noun, rhetorical amplification. Rhetorican, noun, one who teaches the art of rhetoric. You would put a lot of Jesuits in that category right there. One who teaches the art of rhetoric or the principles and rules of correct and elegant speaking. Kind of like neuro-linguistic programming, a creation of the Jesuits itself. The ancient sto sophists and rhetoricans who had young auditors lived till they were a hundred years old. Two, one well versed in the rules and principles of rhetoric. Three, an orator. Or an orator. Rhetorican adjective, see the noun, suiting a master of rhetoric. And right here, rhetori, rhetorize, verb intransitive, intransitive, to play the orator. Rhetor, rhetori, rhetorize, excuse me, verb intransitive, intransitive, to re represent by a figure of oratory. So, we read that definition, all of them, <laughs> but rhetoric. Now, the art of speaking with propriety, elegance, and force. Two, the power of persuasion or attraction. That which allures or charms. We speak of the rhetoric of the tongue and the rhetoric of the heart or eyes. Sweet, silent rhetoric of persuading eyes. And then in quotation, it has Daniel. I didn't read the little uh, like bracketed parts there for you, but if you have this, check it out. It's like, Brad, why, why don't we look at rhetoric? Again, using my fancy schmancy cell phone, going to check out this article, and I'm going to put it this article in the description box of this video as well. This, uh, this article, you're going to write here, for example, here, 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 let me show you. You see, like right here, you press that. Yeah, I mean, there are many links off of this article that you can look at. This is a very informative um, article that a beloved brother from Australia sent me. And just reading it, uh, like he said, note the double speak. It's like... You don't know what double speak is? Check out George Orwell's 1984. Uh, if you have not read that, uh, I have not read it myself, but if you haven't looked into it or some of the quotes about it, wow. Wow. Would not mind getting me a copy of 1984 if I have time to read it. <laughs> but anyway, now uh, you'll see in the article, which I'm going to link in the description box. Um, it says right here in the blue about the prime minister. Okay, we're going to click that, but I want to read this uh, on the outset. Is a compulsory COVID-19 vaccine possible? A rhetorical question. <laughs> Okay, reading, reading, uh, reading this part, you see, to where it says read more. Well, I'm not going to read that. 
but we're going to be reading the stuff that is pertinent onto the nation of Australia. Brethren, keep, uh, keep your brothers, the church and sisters of the Church of the Living God of, in Australia in your prayers, and in your nation, of course, and in other nations that you are aware of, okay? But our, our brothers and sisters in Australia... Hey, brother? Brother? If by any chance you were to leave your nation, um, you wouldn't like the weather up here. <laughs> you wouldn't. But uh, you go to O'Hare. We'll pick you up. We got a place for you, brother. We got a place for you. Seriously. Seriously. I, I'm just throwing that out there. Okay? Okay. Same with uh, any one of you, my brothers or sisters, um, who have that kind of trouble. We only have a small apartment, but hey, you got to leave your nation because of this kind of craziness. Anyway, is a compulsory COVID-19 vaccine possible? Rhetorical question. The promise to provide free COVID-19 vaccines to all Australians has sparkled intense has sparked, excuse me, has sparked intense discussion over how far the government will go to get people immunized. If you saw the last video, which I will be uploading first, I haven't uploaded it yet, uh, even in that article makes reference to Australia about what's going on over there and about how the Australian police, just like in the uh, Inquisitions, have the authority to kick in doors, smash windows of people who are not complying. That's not going on here in America yet, but it's coming. It's coming. Okay. Prime Minister Scott Morrison said he expected the vaccine would be as mandatory as you could possibly make it. <laughs> uh, but later walk back the comments. As, as mandatory as you could make it. Yeah, yeah. John Wardle, a professor of public health from UTS, has told 9.com AU, I'm assuming Australia, whether a vaccine mandate is possible, and if not, what Australians could expect as an alternative. Yeah, like concentration camps, or as you would, um, re-education camps. I think I, and the video that uh, um, I did on that was for the common good, I think. I can't remember offhand. But now, okay, now that we read that, okay, we're, I'm going to press this uh, in the blue where it talks about this. Okay, see that? See that? I want to press this blue thing where it talks about Prime Minister Scott Morrison. Then it's going to take you... To this and here is this uh, which shows a video which we're not going to play obviously but it says coronavirus vaccine as mandatory as you can make it says p.m. okay <clears throat> reading uh, reading verbatim as much as my tongue won't trip over itself a vaccine for COVID-19 would be as mandatory as you can make it, Prime Minister Scott Morrison has confirmed. Mr. Morrison said an agreement has been reached based on a letter of intent between the government and British pharmaceuticals giant AstraZeneca to secure 25 million doses of the vaccine being developed by Oxford University if it proves successful in human trials. If successful, Australia would manufacture and supply 
vaccines on home soil. Now, very quickly, the coronavirus was um, has a U.S. patent on it, which came from the Purbright Institute in England. Okay, and when you, uh, I have the uh, the uh, coronavirus U.S. patent on my channel in the about section. And for those of you who have asked about um, helping, uh, it's in the about section. Okay, it's in the about section. But, okay, they already have the vaccine. They've already had it. I am totally convinced of that. I am totally convinced of that. They're just playing this along to get people as terrified as they can get to willingly submit to these stupid maxims. Or, like in the previous video, in the previous article, um, governments might be putting things in the water supply to make people more uh, uh, compliable to these things. The stuff that is equivalent to magic mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now continuing. But the vaccine would need to be given to 95% of the population to make it effective, he said. I'm advised we'll need about a 95% vaccination rate across the country. And the 5% that aren't vaccinated, what are you going to do with them? Put them in concentration camps? Kill them? Put them in jail? <laughs> that, okay. That is the normal target range for when you're having a vaccination program, and we'll be seeking to ensure that that is widely implemented, Mr. Morrison told reporters during a visit to the AstraZeneca lab in Sydney. I have a pretty strong view on vaccines. Being the social, being the social services minister that introduced no job, no jab, no play. No jab, no play. No jab, no play. Get on a plane, go to O'Hare Airport, let me know when you arrive. My wife and I will come and get you. You're going to hate the weather up here. <laughs> but. <laughs> what is important to understand with any of these vaccines is it does protect you. But it also protects the community, the common good. And as is the case with any vaccine, there will be some individuals who, for precise medical reasons, can have issues with any vaccine. I wonder how they define medical, whether uh, because of the poison in it or medical, meaning that they have a brain and say we're not taking it. I wonder how they would define medical here and used in that context. I wonder. They and their safety and their health depends on the vaccines take up more broadly in the community. That's how they get protected. And this is an important part of our vaccine strategy, not just on COVID-19, but more broadly. We'll seek it, its most widespread application as we do with all important vaccines. Earlier, Mr. Morrison told Three AWs, Neil Mitchell, the vaccine would be as mandatory as you can make it. See what he meant about doublespeak? Acting Chief Medical Officer Paul Kelly says he expects there will be a very strong take up of a COVID-19 vac COVID vaccine should trials be successful. He says rollout of the vaccine would begin with a voluntary call out and would be followed by discussions about how to roll it out nationally. <laughs> voluntary. Yeah, maybe to begin. 
I'm sure there will be long queues, social distanced, of course, for this vaccine, Professor Kelly said. Did you get that? I'm sure there will be long queues, social distanced, of course, for this vaccine. See, they've already had this vaccine. I, I know it. I know it. Can I prove it to you? No. But I know they've already they already got this vaccine. But see, they're building up the fear. They're building up through the propaganda, through the Jesuit um, media. OK, they're building it and building it and building it to get it to such a point where everybody is so uh, paranoid. I know paranoid is not in the scriptures, but that everyone is so fearful that even those who do have brains in their head would probably be at the point where, okay, I'm going to get this vaccine. Look at me. Look at me. As the Lord Jesus Christ, my God and Father, is my witness, and you, my brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God, I, Brad Paul Avenshine, will not take the vaccine. You're going to have to kill me. You're going to have to kill me. How about you? Oh, you say that now. Try me. I look, See, see the, the difference is if they kill me, I, I, I know where I'm going. <laughs> I know where I go, I'm going because I have believed the record that God hath given of his son. And that's referring to Jesus Christ, God the Father, uh, God the Father, God manifest in the flesh. Okay? I know where I'm going. So yeah, try me. Come to my door, say, vaccinate or be in prison. Uh, sorry there, buddy. Um, you're not going to put me in prison, so you're going to have to kill me. We don't want to use violence, Mr. Robinshine. <sighs> okay, I'm sorry then. Get my pistol out. Kill me. And yeah, let's continue. It will be incredibly welcomed by many. It will be the absolute ticket. Check this out. It will it will be incredibly welcomed by many. It will be the absolute ticket to get back to some sort of normal society and the things we all love and enjoy. Like taking the mark after the body of Christ has been called up. You want to buy stuff? You want to sell? You want to get your stuff? Take the mark. See, it's preparatory. That's all it is. And we, the Church of the Living God, I know you get tired of it, brethren. We gotta fight this thing, man, woman. I think there will be strong take up of the vaccine. There will be some who, for medical reasons, as the PM said, will not be able to take the vaccine. But there will be very strong campaigns to encourage people. Again, I would like to know. Uh, for medical reasons. I would like to know how he personally defines that. I would really like to know. I would really like to know. Because remember, um, they could classify your, uh, because you have a brain in your head, uh, your unwillingness to subject yourself to a toxin that has uh, aborted children in it. Okay. Thank you, Brother Melanson. Um, yeah, not going to take it. So they would probably say that's a medical condition that could be tra uh, treated through pharmacia sorcery, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would love to know what he means by medical there. Federal Health Minister Greg Hunt said the vaccine would give all Australians the prospect of getting out of this, just like the mark of the beast will be. When we, uh, which will come in after we are caught up, okay? There's obviously more science to go 
but we're in a position that we can provide for and protect all Australians, assuming that the trials are as successful as they appear to be, Mr. Hunt told 2GBS, 2GBS's Ben Fordham. We will, pro we will be providing it to the whole of the Australian population for free. For free. A medical expert panel has been appointed to determine who would get the vaccine first, led by Professor Brendan Murphy. And I saw on uh, Rome Reports that uh, Francis... <coughs> <coughs> Beg your pardon. <clears throat> Beg your pardon. Congestion. Congestion. Uh, Francis uh, said that it's unfair that the rich get the vaccine first. When in reality, um, who do you think they're testing this thing on? Testing, so called. They have to do it to keep up appearances. Like people in Africa, Kenya. Human guinea pigs? Oh, but governments wouldn't do that. Yeah, right. <clears throat> People over 60, as well as those with asthma or heart disease, transplant recipients, and cancer patients will be prioritized in receiving the vaccine. <clears throat> I love this. There's no hidden agenda here. <laughs> Double speak. Mr. Hunt said, our goal is for, our goal is for the whole population and your priority naturally would start with the elderly and the health workers and those with special needs. But we will be getting it out as quickly as possible to as many people as possible. Then it gives some kind of a diagram here. Uh, AstraZeneca has signed a deal to produce up to 2 billion doses of the vaccine, currently in its third phase of testing at the university. Researchers hope the vaccine can be ready by October. And, it, and if all goes well, Australians may have access to the vaccine by early 2021. which is another reason why I also, with many brethren, believe that the catching away will happen next spring. The chronological spring of, uh, uh, according to the Jewish calendar. Okay, the chronological spring, not our spring here like in America or something like that. But, um, and note that it says by October. Again, I do believe that there's going to be a trigger event that's going to push these things even into more extreme measures than even what they got going on in Australia, all across the, the globe or flat earth, whatever you prefer, okay? Continuing, but if it's available earlier, we'll be in a position to develop it, Mr. Hunt said. And then here's another thing in blue. It would be manufactured through CSL's Parkville plant in Melbourne, which could help roll out a vaccine to supply Australia, New Zealand, and the South Pacific, Mr. Hunt said. Check this one out. Check this out. In addition to the vaccine agreement, Australia has signed a $24.7 million deal to buy 100 million needles and syringes from U.S. medical technology company Becton Dixon. And then that is the end of the article. But like I said, I'm going to link that in the... Um, in the description box. But like the brother said, <clears throat> but like I just said, uh, and like the brother said, 
Um, the doublespeak, the rhetoric used by their politicians was off the charts. And the Jesuits are the masters of rhetoric. It is an art form, which we as the Church of God do not employ, even though some cases could be charged with it. But see, that's why our speech. Now, get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, and turn in your King James scriptures to Psalm 12. Psalm 12. We are going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 4. Not 112, Brad. <laughs> Hope you're already there. Psalm 12. Pick your part. Verses 1 on to verse 4. The rhetoric used by politicians, and especially they in Australia and also look at our American politicians also in England okay rhetoric the use of words okay and words do have meaning like I said that one guy he kept saying for medical reasons I'd love to hear his definition of what for medical reasons why you would not be able to Psalm 12 verses 1 under verse 4 help Lord for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. They speak vanity every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips, and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who have said with our tongue, we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us you know when you're on YouTube if you see the ticker what they call it all the propaganda Psalm 56 Psalm 56 Psalm 56 I'm gonna read this whole psalm I hope you can handle it I know you can Psalm 56. Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up, for they be many that fight against me, O Thou Most High. What time I am afraid, I will trust in Thee. In God, I will praise His word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. That's why I say, when it comes down, and that, that article, is it possible that uh, mandatory vaccinations? Such, such rhetoric. That's why I say, when it comes down, vaccine, death or imprisonment, I choose death. All you Jesuits out there, try me. Try me. Unless you repent, you Jesuits are going to hell. I have fun storming the castle. Every day, verse 5, every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. Oh, I could name a whole bunch of people here on YouTube who do that. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps. They when they lay when they wait for my soul. Shall they escape by iniquity? In thine anger, cast down thy the people, O God. Thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. 
In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Are you afraid of men? Are you afraid of men? What they can do to you? You know, the Jesuits do not forgive nor forsake. But at the end of the day, look who they're going to have to deal with. <clears throat> Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? Look at that verse. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Present tense. Wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling? Instruction in righteousness. You're saved and born again, but you don't believe that the Lord can provide for you. Yeah, but get your butt out the way. Get your butt out the way. You're saved. The Lord can and will provide for you. Not according as you greed, but as you need. Wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling? He'll give you an escape from temptation? That I may walk before God in the light of the living to be a witness and an example? You get it? All right. Proverbs. You know, I don't know how you personally read the scriptures. <clears throat> what kind of system... Or how you go about your daily, daily reading of the scriptures. Brother, sister, are you at least in the Proverbs every day? Every day? There are 31 days this month. You can read through the Proverbs 12 times a year. I won't get started on that. But <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 2. Now I want you to pay attention to these in the Proverbs that we're going to be looking at uh, from Proverbs uh, 2, 5, and 7. Okay? I want you to notice something. Proverbs 2, verses 10 on to verse 20. Proverbs 2, verses 10 on to verse 20. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. How about having a little discretion with what's going on nowadays, huh? To deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh froward things, uses rhetoric. Who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. Who rejoice to do evil and delight in the frowardness of the wicked. Whose ways are crooked and they froward in their paths. Check this. To deliver thee from the strange woman. Even from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Which forsaketh the guide of her youth, and forgetteth the covenant of her God. For her house inclineth unto death, and her pass unto the dead. None that go unto her return again, neither take they hold of the paths of life. That thou mayest walk in the way of good men, and keep the paths of righteousness. Strange woman. Even from the stranger with flattereth with her words. Proverbs chapter 5, verses 1, under verse 14. My son, 
Attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my, to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion. How do you get discretion? Just follow the Spirit blindly without having a perfect set of scriptures to balance on. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah, as you're getting, uh, what was that? Um, uh, no, no something, no play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That thou mayest regard discretion and that thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb and her mouth is smoother than oil. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. There's a certain organization out there that says they have never changed. When actually they do, they just keep getting worse and worse. Um, you, the Church of the Living God, pretty much already know of what this is kind of referring to. But there might be some out there who do not know. And hence, bear with me. Gotta think of those too, brethren, sisters, you know, those who are without. Kind of, you know, there's no choice in it, especially nowadays. Let's continue. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. Lest thou give thine honors, thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth. And thy labors be in the house of a stranger, and thou mourn at the last, when thy flesh and thy, bo and thy body are consumed. And say, How have I hated instruction, and my heart despised reproof? I have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. Proverbs Chapter 7. We're going to read this whole thing. <gasps> can you handle that? I hope you can. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live, and the law is the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers, and write them upon the table of thine heart. Say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister, and call understanding thine kinswoman, thy kinswoman. That they may keep thee from the strange woman. There's that strange woman again. From the stranger which flattereth with her words. For at the window of my house I looked through my casement. And beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths, a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner. And he went the way to her house, in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot, and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn, her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, There is no salvation outside the Catholic Church. <coughs> <laughs> I had to. Beg your pardon. Sorry. Let's continue. Verse 14. I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. 
Come, let us take our love, fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him, and will come home at the day appointed. <clears throat> with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. Flattery. And Daniel warns about how the Antichrist will use flattery. And the Antichrist is going to be a pope. Let's continue. He goeth after her straightway, as an ox goeth to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. And what is a fool as defined by scripture? The fool has said in his heart there is no God. Till a die that till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. Hearken unto me now therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths. For she hath cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. And all her little minions, her military army. And who is that? You don't know? Proverbs 26. Verses 22 through verse 28. Proverbs 26, verses 22, verse 28. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Burning lips and a wicked heart are like a potsherd covered with silver dross. He that hateth dissembleth with his lips, and layeth up deceit within him. When he speaketh fair, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Uh, uh, there's a city that sits on seven hills. Oh, I am saying. Whose hatred is covered by deceit. His wickedness shall be shewed for the whole congregation. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth, rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. You will reap what you sow. A lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. Romans. Romans chapter 3. Ah, ah, big, big part. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, verses 9 on to verse 18. Romans chapter 3, verses 9 on to verse 18. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit, the poison of asps, is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. I. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. 
The way of peace have they not known, and there is no fear of God before their eyes. You know, brethren, in my 12 years, in my 12 years saved, when you come, uh, come across those who are of the Church of the Living God, brothers and sisters, whatever condition they are in, within conversation, no matter what, you will see that they know the way of peace, the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will see the fear of God. Now, we all are not, some fear God more than others, even of the church of the living God. We should all be horribly afraid of the Lord, absolutely. But that is resident in everyone who is truly saved and born again, because they have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, living within them, sealed. Okay? And also, Romans 16 Romans 16, verses 17 to 20. Romans 16, verses 17 to 20. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. For your, for your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. But yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And incidentally, getting back to who is this strange woman that was being, that we were looking at, that was being referenced to in the Proverbs? Who is that strange woman? You of the Church of the Living God already know this, but perchance there's someone who is not saved, or someone who's just downright <clears throat> Revelation chapter 17 verses 1 on to verse 6 And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. And later within uh, the chapter of Revelation 17, you'll figure out who those waters are. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, and having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of, the abomination, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her head was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. John couldn't believe it. It's like, wow. Wow. Who is this woman? Who is this woman? <clears throat> I 
Revelation 18, verses 14, on to verse 18. Revelation 18, verses 14 on to verse 18. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour... So great riches has come to naught. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? Rome. Roman Catholicism. Catholicism, Jesuitism is mystery Babylon. That's the woman. Okay? Semiramis, the Catholic Mary. Okay? It's Catholicism, Jesuitism. Okay? Her much fair speeches, her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Masters of rhetoric through their, uh, through their uh, universities, which bozos like that prime minister guy in Australia was using perfectly. It's Catholic. It's Jesuit. Jesuit Catholic today, especially. They're one. Okay? Do you get it? Like I said, you are the body of Christ, the Church of the Living God. You already get that. But if you are not saved, if you're watching this, Roman Catholicism, the Jesuits, the Jesuits, you could say, are Christians because they're not of the Church of the Living God. And according to Catholicism, in order to be a Christian, you have to believe that three persons, spirit, soul, and body, make one God. Yeah, see what kind of a mess Roman Catholicism is, or I should say, more appropriately, Jesuitism is. My goodness, people. All right. Go to Jeremiah now. My favorite book in all of Scripture. Jeremiah chapter 9. One under verse 16 to start. Jeremiah 9, chapter 1 under verse 16 to start. Oh, that my head were waters and mine eyes a fountain of tears that I might weep in day white that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh that I had in the wilderness a lodging place of wayfaring men, that I might leave my people and go from them, for they be all adulterers, an assembly of treacherous men. And they bend their tongues like their bow for lies, but they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth. They proceed from evil to evil, and they know not me, saith the Lord. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanders. And they will deceive every one his neighbor, and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies, and weary themselves to commit iniquity. Their ha thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit they refuse to know me, saith the Lord. Therefore God gave them over, as it says in the book of Romans, chapter 1. You resist the truth. God will give you what you ask for. Hey, for those of you naming and claiming Satanists, 
There you go. Yeah, God will give you what you want. Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit they refuse to know me, saith the Lord. Continuing verse 7. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will melt them and try them. For how shall I do for the daughter of my people? Their tongue is as an arrow shot out. It speaketh deceit. One speaketh peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth. But in heart he layeth his weight. Shall I not visit them for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? God has a soul? No. You don't say. For the mountains will I take up a weeping and wailing, and for the habitations of the wilderness a lamentation, because they are burned up so that none can pass through them. Neither can men hear the voice of the cattle. Both the fowl of the heavens and the beasts are fled. They are gone. And I, and I will make Jerusalem heaps and a den of dragons, and I will make the cities of Judah desolate without an inhabitant. Who is the wise man that may understand this? And who is he to whom the mouth of the Lord hath spoken that he may declare it? For what the land perisheth, and is burned up like a wilderness, that none passeth through? And the Lord saith, Because they have forsaken my law which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, neither walked therein, but have walked after the imagination of their own heart, and after Balim, which their fathers taught them. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will feed them, even this people, with wormwood and give them water of gall to drink. I will scatter them among the, among the heathen, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, and I will send a sword after them till I have consumed them. Referencing the diaspora, Israel being dispersed, okay? Now, look at Jeremiah 23 and 24. Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Do you know the Lord? Do you know who he is? He's a trinity. No, he is not. If you're a Trinitarian, you do not know the Lord. You might think you do, but you don't. Especially if you cling to it. Do you know who the Lord is? You need to ask yourself that question, friend. You seriously do. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Ah, that's, that's the second. Hold on. That's the second time I've done that. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verses 18 on to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 25. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, in a lot of modern Bible uh, translations it says, that are being saved. And those trace back to the Alexandrian line of manuscripts, which is 
Roman Catholicism. They are Catholic Bibles. Anything that ain't, anything that ain't King James, it's Catholic. Okay, let's continue. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, by the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Hello, what is a Greek? A Gentile. Jews require a sign. A Greek. Gentiles seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block. And unto the Greeks foolishness. What's that guy's name? Um, Dawkins? He wrote that book, The God Delusion. See, unto those, unto the Greeks, foolishness. And unto the Jews, a stumbling block. You're saying that's our God, our Father, who was butt naked on that cross. You're going to, that, that's our God. That's our Savior. That's God the Father. That's God manifest in the flesh on the cross. It's a stumbling block. To the Jew and to the Greek. What? 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 Th th that don't make no sense. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Now where it says called there, it is not that Calvinism that this guy saved, that guy's lost, and they can't do anything about it. No. Once you are truly saved, you are of the called. See, God is calling all men everywhere to believe. <coughs> Excuse me, to repentance. And we would have all men to be saved. And we are man. That includes you women, of course. Of course. Okay? But the called there means, see what it says, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, which are called. You're saved, you are called. See, that's how that works. It's not Calvinism. Let's continue. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and the things which are not to bring to nothing things that are. I know I said on to verse twenty five, didn't I? But yeah, I couldn't help myself. That no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, which we just looked at in Jeremiah, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. And I have written down here, that we were going to read the entire chapter of 2 Corinthians, which is only 16 verses. You do that yourself on your own time. Okay? Okay? You see, the stuff that's going on nowadays, brethren, is madness. And that window is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Or as uh, Brother um, uh, Melanson has said, the door is closing. The door is closing. Before the catching away of the body of Christ, 
there's not going to be a return to truth. And we're seeing them all come out of woodwork. You see guys like that in Australia, again, my heart goes to every single one of you, even those of you lost people in Australia. My heart goes to you. And brethren, and, uh, my brother in Australia, got a place for you. <laughs> First Thessalonians now, chapter 2. We already uh, looked in this, but First Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 12. For yourselves, brethren, know our entrance in unto you, that it was not in vain. But even after that we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated, as ye know at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. Now what is the gospel? That Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. God the Father was on that cross. God died for you. Okay? God the Father shed his blood on the cross. Okay? It was the body that died. Okay? The word made flesh. Okay? It was just the skin suit. Uh, up there, but that was the blood of God that was shed on the cross and that sh shed blood of God has made an atonement for your sins Do you believe that? You want to get saved? You have to know that Jesus Christ is God the Father Because unless you believe that I am he that he is the Father you will die in your sins and that you can't save yourself and you ain't good. There ain't nothing you can do to be good enough to merit salvation. You understand that? Verse 3. For our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor in guile. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. For neither at any time used we flattering words, as ye know, nor a cloak of covetousness, God is witness. Nor of men sought we glory, neither of you, nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children, so being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you, not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because you were dear unto us. For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you, we preached unto you the gospel of God. Ye are witnesses. And God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. This is going to be greatly touched on in a video, Lord willing, I'm going to be doing tomorrow that this same brother um, really helped me with. Helped me with. More long lines. As ye know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children, that ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. Oh, really? Oh, I just put that in my dog's water. The notes that I was just... Oh. <laughs> Unless you believe Jesus Christ is the Father, God manifests in the flesh. It was the flesh that died on the cross. Jesus Christ is God our Father. Unless you believe that Jesus Christ is God the Father, like he says here in the scriptures in the book of John, 
unless you believe that he is the father. You're going to die in your sins. You have to be broken of your self-righteousness, that you're a good person, and that you can save yourself. Because we already saw that there is none righteous, no, not one. You can't save yourself. There's nothing you can do to save yourself. You have to believe on the man, Christ Jesus. And trust on him, what he did on the cross for you, that the blood of God shed on the cross is an atonement for your sins. And you trust on him. For there is one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. Not a church, not a priest, and definitely not some arenas. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Knowing that you ain't good, what do you do? Romans chapter 10. Beginning at verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. God's imputed righteousness is unto you once you are saved and born again and sealed. Until the day of redemption, which is the catching away of the body of Christ for the time of Jacob's trouble, which is coming rapidly. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend? into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above. Or, who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith, which we preach. Humble yourself. You're not good. You can't save yourself. There ain't no penance. There ain't no uh, sacrament. There ain't no good work you're going to do to get saved. There's nothing you can do except believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But see, you got to be broken. You got to know how what a scumbag you are. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. And you got to know that unless you saved, you're going to hell. You're not good. You can't save yourself. God was manifest in the flesh to pay for your sins and mine. He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And he paid for your sin with his blood. You have to believe that. But you also have to know. You have to come to him broken. It's called repentance. And unless you're broken, you want to, like a lot of people like to do, just woo -hoo, jump over that. You ain't gonna, that ain't it. Because a truly broken man or woman who has come to the end of themselves, who know they ain't good, and know they can't save themselves, From right here in Romans, chapter 10, on to verse 13, verses 9 on to verse 13, is the simplest thing on earth. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. 
For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Okay? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, verses 12 and verse 13. You will run into people who say that this is talking about, this is for the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. <laughs> uh, when actually, no, verses 12 and verse 13 says for who it is. This dispensation. See, calling on the Lord after you are broken is the ultimate shoe of humility. Humble yourself. Get saved. Because let me tell you something there, friend. You don't believe that Jesus is the Father. Who saves you? The second person of the Trinity. The second person. Who's not the Father. So a lesser God saves you. I actually do feel sorry for you Trinitarians. And it's, you know what, really quickly on that, on some of the Trinitarians, I don't find fault with some of them. A lot of you know, with those who are, you know, burn you at the stake because you reject their heresy. <laughs> yeah, but it has been so ingrained because of this woman. Anyway, get saved. Or it's too late. Anyway, brethren, um, that's going to be it for this video. I have yet to unlo uh, uh, unload. I have yet to upload these. Um, it's 12.07. My wife's going to be home in about an hour. So um, these are going to be uploaded today. Um, also going to put a lot of links in there in these videos. And Lord willing, tomorrow um, I'll be doing that um, beautiful, beautiful um thing that um, the Lord gave unto a brother which a brother like, hey so anyway I love you and uh, thank you um Thank you. Thank you. I love you. See, see, I, I don't deal well with that. I don't deal well with that. I really don't. Um, it's a struggle, but the Lord's will be done. The Lord bless you a thousandfold. Beloved brethren, Church of the Living God. Love you. I'm going to get going on this. We'll see you in the next video. Hopefully tomorrow. If it will not be tomorrow, for whatever the Lord will, uh, either uh, it's going to be tomorrow, but if not, Saturday. Got to get this one out. It's beautiful. Beautiful. So, anyway, I love you. Bye bye.